Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the ribbon. The main tool available for you to use in OneNote is the ribbon. This object allows you to perform all of the commands available in the program. The ribbon is divided into tabs. Within these tabs are different groups of commands. The commands in each group can then be accessed either through the use of buttons, boxes, or menus that are available within the group. As we've mentioned, OneNote is different from other Office applications in that the ribbon is collapsed by default. If it's collapsed, you can display the ribbon by simply clicking on the name of one of the tabs. To collapse the ribbon, you just click on the name of the active tab. Once collapsed, you can expand it again by clicking on any of the available tabs. Now you should also note that when you click on a tab named to display the ribbon, it hides the notebook header and some other options. This is to provide us with more workspace when working on our various pages. However, you can change this display. And if you want to display the ribbon without obscuring the other features, you can double click on a tab within the ribbon to both hide and show the contents of the ribbon. I could double click, for example, on the Home tab. You'll see that then the entire ribbon is shown and we also have our navigation drop down back as well as our section tabs are displayed here. Now that that is showing and we see the ribbon and it's displayed, we can go ahead and click on any of the main tabs shown in the ribbon to switch the groups that are displayed. You'll see that then the ribbon is constantly changing depending on what you're doing in OneNote. The default tabs shown in the ribbon are File, we also have Home, Insert, Draw, History, Review, and also View. Depending on the version of OneNote that you're using, your ribbon might look slightly different. We'll be going over where those features have moved in the 2013 version from the previous version, but there aren't too many differences. It's very, very similar. So have no fear. We will get there. Let's take a look at the Home tab. Give that a click. The Home tab includes buttons that allow you to format notebook content insert and locate content tags, which we discuss later, and even coordinate notebook content with Microsoft Outlook. The Insert tab to the right of that includes commands that allow you to insert, link to and attach images, files, audiovisual files, timestamps, and special symbols. Then we have the Draw tab, which contains commands to insert and manipulate handwritten content. On the History tab, you'll find commands to assist you in sharing a notebook and managing multi-user notebooks. The Review tab contains the commands for working with text stored on notebook pages. Here you can check the spelling, research word choices, and even translate content to a different language. Finally, we have the View tab which displays the commands to change the appearance of the OneNote window and notebook pages, change the magnification of notebook content, and work with multiple program windows. Now, in addition to the primary tabs available for you to use, you will also see special contextual tabs that will appear within the ribbon when you have a particular type of object selected or inserted in your notebook. You'll see the Table Tools Layout Contextual tab appear, for example, when you have a table selected within your notebook page. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We have our Employee section here, and on this particular page that we're looking at, we already have a table inserted. And when you look up in the ribbon then, you'll see now we have this Table Tools Contextual tab that has appeared right here and that provides us with some different tools. 
the groups of buttons that then appear on these contextual tabs will be directly related to the type of object that you have selected. You can make the contextual tabs disappear by clicking away from the selected object within the content window if that's what's activating that contextual tab. In the case, for example, that we have here, when we have a table on the page, that tab is going to show up automatically just by having that table on the page. Now, although the ribbon is collapsed by default, you can change its display behavior to meet your needs. At the far right end of the title bar, you can click or tap the Ribbon Display Options button to reveal a drop-down of display options. Let's take a look at that. Right down here at the far end, right to the right of the Help button, which is the small question mark, we have the Ribbon Display Options. Give that a click to reveal that drop-down. You can choose to set the ribbon to Auto Hide, which collapses the ribbon until you click at the very top of the application window to open it. When you click outside the ribbon, it will then hide it again. Now you could also select to display the Tabs Only, or Show Tabs here, until the tabs are clicked to show their contents. Now this is the setting by default. But you can also choose to set the ribbon to show tabs and commands right here, which will display the entire ribbon in the program interface until you hide it by double-clicking a tab name or by changing the display options with the ribbon display options button again. That's how we work with the ribbon. We're going to be looking at all of the different features and groups and tools that we have available within the ribbon, as well as how we can customize it further in the upcoming lessons. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.